hear from Ankit. Anymore. So good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about Honeywell Connected Life Sciences journey with QuickSight. Uh, before I get started, a little bit about myself. My name is Ankit Singh, and I'm the Director of Architecture for Honeywell's Connected Life Sciences Division. Uh, I lead a team of solutions architects who are currently working on the enterprise architecture for the Connected Life Sciences Division. <clears throat> As you can see, Honeywell's Life Sciences portfolio spans across all facets of life sciences. We are in the connected logistics, manufacturing excellence platform, track and trace, life sciences, quality management solutions. More specifically, I work for the quality management solutions team, but we are now rebranded as a connected life sciences solution. Um, talking about HCE in numbers, HCE stands for Honeywell's Connected Enterprise. We are about 4,000 global employees, out of which 2,000 are software engineers. 10% are about about 10% are data engineers. We have 350,000 data connections, 100 million in assets, and because of our commitment and focus to innovation, we have 41 patent grants in the last year. Uh, we are built on top of AWS services, so we use 70 AWS services. I want to talk, before I start talking about QuickSight integration, I want to talk briefly about our architecture. Since we are in a highly regulated space for life sciences, we have to honor the security and compliance. We are the GXP compliant app with CFR part 11 audit trail compliance. We also have a SaaS solution provider. And the reason why we are called connected life sciences is because we have two reasons for that. One is because we are building a connector framework, which you see at the bottom, where we are able to connect to any system of record from any customer. And the other is we are building a connected vision across Honeywell, where we will be offering a multitude of solutions in the life science industries, which I talked about earlier. Uh, in the middle layer, in the orange box, you see we have a list of data orchestration and data governance services, along with some core business logic. And then we have the AI ML framework that is built on top of it. And this is where QuickSight is also built on top of it. And finally, we have the business services that solve the critical workflows in the life sciences space. So some of the workflows are the product quality review, quality management review, product recalls, knowledge management reviews, et cetera. Talking about the tech stack, we are built on top of native AWS services, where we do the AI and IoT platform, user management, backup and disaster recovery, privacy and security. In the orange box, we have a common set of microservices that serve these business applications that sit on the top. So now I'm going to talk about QuickSight's integration with Honeywell Connected Life Sciences. So why did we choose QuickSight? We started this journey about a year ago. And we were when we started our first application, we started building dynamic charts. We were using D3, the React charting libraries. And very soon we realized that that was a mistake. We need to go to an enterprise-grade BI solution. And that's where we started evaluating some big players like Good Data, uh, Power BI, QuickSight. But one of the critical reasons why we went with QuickSight is because our whole framework is built on top of AWS. And the, the ease and the homogeneity with AWS services, that's absolutely mind-blowing. Um, we are also data mesh compatible. I was talking about the connector framework. We have a concept of data fabric, which works perfectly with QuickSight. Obviously, a very, very easy to use and intuitive UI, very user-friendly UI. And then it's a serverless cost model, just because we are relatively new in our journey. So as we get bigger and bigger, we're going to have more customers that on board with this. Uh, but we want to start, we want to focus more in the early stages on the core business problems rather than focusing on the infrastructure like provisioning, compute instances, and data, data storage instances. So in that case, QuickSight does work perfectly. So I want to here quickly illustrate a concept of multi-tenancy here in life sciences space. So what I'm showing is there are many customers, and each customer might have several layers of hierarchies of nesting on how they want to distribute their uh, domains. So for example, a customer might have sites underneath it, and within a site, you might have various departments underneath it. Now for your customers, it might be a completely opposite hierarchy. 
You might have departments as the first layer, and then you might have sites underneath it, and you might have some job roles underneath that. So whatever the level of hierarchy is in your customer's space, it does not matter. QuickSight, along with the combination of IAM permissions, role level settings, column level settings, and the um, lake formation settings, give you that flexibility to provide a secure solution in a multi-tenant solution. And as you can see, um, namespaces sit on the top. You can provision parallel namespaces. And so that's a very, very good concept with uh, QuickSight. So as you can see, here I'm illustrating that all our big enterprise customers, we provision separate namespaces for them. And within the namespace, you can see there are various different types of users. Like you have authors, you have administrators, you have um, department users, you might have some readers who are just the end users of your application. So whatever the, uh, whatever the hierarchy of nesting of users you have within your namespace, QuickSight will allow you to achieve that. And you can do that through the concept of parallel namespaces. Through this diagram, I want to illustrate one of the many workflows that we have in our quality management review application. As you can see, there are three lambdas functions. One of the lambda functions that's at the bottom is the, called the fabric data access service. And that's the service that's responsible for taking the raw customer data and pushing it to the AWS Athena. And from the APIs that are provided by QuickSight, we can convert them into QuickSight data sets. And once you have the QuickSight data sets, you're able to create the dashboards and visuals out of it. Um, then you can see a parallel line going from HKMR service all the way to the QuickSight. So you can see by this that there is direct connectivity to QuickSight API through this. And obviously we have other services like Redshift, SageMaker. So if there is anything that you want to take from this slide is that AW, the QuickSight works very, very well with all the AWS services. So I know that Joe's already talked about the embedding, various embedding types, but I want to emphasize, uh, talk very briefly about these. So there is one-click user embedding. So again, it's very good for POCs and for your internal applications. All you do is generate a static URL embedded within an iframe in your application, and you're good to go. But the, the approach that we took is the registered user embedding, where the identity of the user is present in QuickSight. So you would ask why? And that's because if you see on the registered user embedding box, there is a console capability that's available. So in life sciences and pharmaceutical space, we have different types of users. You have admin users who want to work on creating the dashboards. They are very, very familiar with data, so they can work with the dashboards. Then you have scientists who can analyze their data. So they want to be the end consumers who want to probably put annotations. And then you have finally the end users, like your consignees, your um, customers, your um, executive management, who are just pure readers. So the registered user embedding allowed us to achieve all those capabilities. I want to show here one of the QuickSight embedding screen. On this screen, you can see that we have the quality management review application, and there are various tabs underneath it. So those tabs are allocated to different department users simultaneously. So that's another really, really fascinating feature of QuickSight. Then multiple users can be working on their own respective dashboards simultaneously without tripping over each other. Based on the security permissions that you've assigned within the namespace, they will either see or be hidden from each other, the assets. Assets like data assets, data sets, and even the, the QuickSight visuals and dashboards that you see. On the left side, as you can see, there are some other functionalities, like you can play around with the filters, you can play around with the parameters. Um, QuickSight has a very fascinating feature that it allows you to build two types of filters inside your application. One is the dynamic filters, that is for your end user. So you build those filters inside your dashboards and visuals and give it to the user so that they can play around with it. And other is the capability to work with the static filters that are part of your native application. So once all the users who are in the data science field are able to work on their respective tabs, they move on and publish these dashboards. Finally, um, there is another step. As you remember, I told you we are in a highly regulated field. So we need to make sure that we have done a thorough investigation with the results that come from these analysis. 
So there's another step where um, you will have scientists who are really, really familiar with the life sciences flows and pharmaceutical manufacturing flows. They come on this canvas. So as you can see, this screen shows the canvas that our application has, not the QuickSight canvas. And we have the capability to bring, selectively bring, the visuals that were created on the dashboards. So you're not really locked to the dashboard. You can bring portions of that dashboard inside your canvas. And then once you bring that, you can add annotations. You can do your own data analysis. You can adjust the views that you see. And it is very, very important in scenarios where you need to do some kind of audit trail logging. So once the scientists are done with their workflow, they publish this. And finally, you see the end user flow, which is your customers, consignees, or your end users. And these are just the readers. They are here to consume your dashboards. And they can see all the annotations that were done by different users prior to the screen. So what's next for us? What's next for us is the paginated reports. Since we are in the life sciences space, our customers have some very unique requirements around how they want their reports to look, how they want their contents and logos to be shown, how they want their visuals to be arranged on the screen. So we are in bringing the paginated reports in the next iteration. Another fascinating feature that QuickSight offers is the embedded queue. So embedded queue allows you to ask questions in English form. So QuickSight behind the scenes takes these questions, extracts some keywords that map to columns, column attributes within your data sets, and able to interpret the question being asked and serve visuals dynamically at runtime. And this is one of the absolutely uh, amazing feature that all our customers are in awe of. Imagine your executive management or end users who are not super technical who, or who are not that familiar with their data. They might ask questions in a pure English form. And another thing that QuickSight does is allows you to implicitly as well as explicitly map the synonyms. So for example, in some cases, you might be calling it a thing as site. In some other cases, you might call it a facility. In some other cases, you might call it a plant. Whatever, so it gives you the capability to map synonyms to the, the question that you're asking. And finally, the nested multi-tenancy. If you remember, I talked about there are several layers of hierarchy within our customers. Right now, we are only at three or four applications in our life sciences application suite. But we are doing a lot of VOC with our customers. And they are coming with a lot more intricate nested multi-tenancy scenarios. So with QuickSight's integration with the row level, column level security, IAM permissioning, and lake formation settings, I have full confidence that we will be able to achieve those workflows. And finally, I want to say a special thanks to the QuickSight team for giving me the opportunity to talk at this event. They have been very helpful. We did a lot of data labs. We been asking the architects a weekly call, and they're able to help us in real time and get us around some really, really complex scenarios in a very timely manner. So with that said, I want to give it back to Joe's. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ankit. All right, so you've heard from Brian and Ankit. You've seen what QuickSight can do. 